Okay, guys, so it's week, uh, it's week six, uh, lecture 11, and we're going to get into dimethyl ether, dimethyl ether, however you like to pronounce it. Um, just read last week's <coughs> post. Thanks for doing that. <coughs> All right, so let's see what Serenity had to say about ethanol. So um, what Serenity is saying here is um, the energy return of corn ethanol, energy return on energy invested, good acronym there, E-R-O-E-I, simply the value, energy inputs divided by outputs divided by inputs. There we go. Process required one P PTU. Uh, good ex very good example. Serenity, nice, word, nice writing. Um, here are the ratios from using USDA's. 2002 methodology, so I'm subtracting byproducts from the inputs across all three reports. Um, 2002, it was return of 1.34, 2004 was 1.67, 2010 was 2.34, so we've apparently gotten better at this. ethanol corn. Okay, so it looks like from his research, research ethanol is a worse ER OEI than, than sugar cane, which right there at 5.0 is obviously better. Um, it does provide a positive energy return. How's it going, Gary? Artificial and synthetic, they have a negative. Uh, it is too expensive an energy return to synthesize syngas. I'm wondering what it means from this. Syngas from what? Uh, carbon monoxide. You're losing me a little bit here on this one. Yeah, um, that's that's one option. It could also be that any um, synthetic ethanol production, and again, I, I've not dug into the research. It could also be that it's um, if it's being done commercially, it's a proprietary uh, proprietary method. energy return on energy invested. Oh, is it, is you mean energy return on energy invested versus energy return on money invested? Is that what it is? Is that what you're... Well, there's two oh, I see. E-R-O. Yeah, um, that's a good one. I, I don't know E-R-O-I. Well, there's obviously some sort of distinct difference. There's um, one, I think, is a ratio and one's a decimal number. Well, here's, here's this one, energy return on investment. It's probably just joules per dollar would be my guess. Or they're the same thing, just different circles. It's the, it's it's the same. They just leave out the second e. Probably just easier to say too. E R O I. How come one one um, tracking the numbers that I get <coughs> is, is in decimals and the other ones in um, ratios I just couldn't, I thought that might I, Yeah, I, I would be surprised if it's decimal versus fractions. I, I would be really surprised by that. No, I, I think, uh, I'm, I'm guessing though, just to answer your question, this is probably the, the typical 
acronym used in financial circles, and the EROEI is the one used in engineering and scientific circles. That would be my guess. But apparently, it's a dimensionless number. Yeah. And the idea is that and it's always, um, well, it's not always greater than one, but if it's, if it's less than one, then it's, I don't want to say it's like not worth your while, um, To get it, I mean, here's here's another way to think about it. Um, what I would like to see is um, how much energy it takes to make a battery. Like if you make a uh, like just just a battery. I gotta do it anyways. Well, just the battery in one's watch. That's what I'm. That's what I'm proposing. It's almost there. Oh, okay. Okay. Little nano machine suite. Because um, what I'm guess, what I guess my point here on the watch is it probably took more energy to make the battery in this watch than the watch itself contains. I mean, than the battery itself contains. Okay. And so in that case, you know, really your your energy return on energy investment is is less than one. But on the other hand, you're just not going to have a watch. You, you, you need your watch, right? Yeah. And it's also, well, I mean, it's, it's simply for going after large amounts of primary energy, too. You might do the same thing on your, on your lawn and say, hey, I just spent... Um, you know, a gallon of fuel mowing my lawn. Where's where's my energy? <laughs> you didn't get any energy back from your lawn. Like you don't, you're not going to go recover that in the compost pile. So it, it's really just for uh, uh, going after large primary energy sources. It's also worth noting, we've, and we've done this in the PV class, that the energy return on energy invested for solar cells when you do the payback because you can also do the payback on a um, time basis you know figure out how much energy the cells produced it ends up being about a six month payback on it, just on a pure energy basis the weird thing about the non-renewables is that there's never really I mean on the one hand sure there's a payback if you own those products and sell them but there's never payback in that the fossil fuels aren't coming back they don't they don't come back the same way the wind come back comes back or the, or the tree grows back or the uh, you know the corn yeah, out of 10, out of 10, 10 times payback, so you get the same sure if you get if, today. right in some places you get a 10 to one but then but then where'd that 10 go? The 10 just went poof. It just went up into the uh, atmosphere. Are you talking on the, um, the terms of where the energy actually goes? Well, it got converted, it got converted. I mean, it went somewhere, you're right. Yeah. So that's, you, that's, that's, that's probably the, mostly, what, 60%, 59% in heat, probably even? Well. It was 100% heat, I mean, really, at the end. Okay, well, that's, um, that's a good, good start on the discussion. I'd like to see uh, the other two guys log into. And just so we can um, get this week going, I want to um, start the week six discussion as well. 
dimethyl ether. Let's go ahead and look up the structure. Right. So there's your um, there's your dimethyl. So on each side, you've got um, a methane. Let's go ahead and draw it out here. So there's your. Uh, Dimethyl. So there's one methyl. And instead of a uh, instead of a methane, we're going to stick an oxygen there, and then we're going to come over and then just reflect that molecule over there. So there's the um, so the two ends are the are the methyls, and the middle is the uh, ether. So there's your diethyl dimethyl ether molecule. Obviously, a hydrocarbon with an extra oxygen thrown in there. Let's take a look at the chapter six notes. Um, relative newcomer to the alt fuels arena. So there's your single oxygen molecule. There's your alkyl groups, methane being one of them. In the case of dimethyl ether, is a one carbon methyl group. So, yeah, DME is the simplest, simplest ether possible. Yeah, I don't know how you get any simpler than that. It's just have a single carbon on each side. Uh, transportation fuel, fluorocarbon substitute in spray cans. Okay, that's good. So it's got uh, good thermal properties. Refrigerant solvent, feedstock um, for making dimethyl sulfate and acetic acid, which is... Um, Dimethyl ether is made from methanol and what is this saying? Hang on. Methanol and methanol. Oh, dimethyl is made from methanol and methanol is made from synthesis gas, which can come from natural gas, biomass, or coal gasification. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, Japanese handbook, um, page 168, 525. I'm not sure what that is. Is it 525 per what? Oh, the book costs 525 bucks. <laughs> oh, gotcha, gotcha. Plasma gasification, zap old tires to produce DMEs. Well, it was. Yeah, I am. I am seeing some neat uh, pyrolysis with, of, of landfill tires, though. We'll check, we'll check out the plasma gasification just for a little bit. Yeah, the waste energy on this one is um, is, is tough because you're hitting you're hitting these huge temperatures, you know, to to break down uh, larger molecules into smaller ones. This is the key too. When you typically when you burn things, you're getting furans. So, <clears throat> pentameric carbon with an oxygen sitting right there. Um, dioxins. Here's a here's a class as well. Typically, there's a chloride on there. Not always. And they are they are highly toxic. I, that's, I don't know exactly. Let's just let's just see what they're. Um, dioxin. You just skim by dibenzyl p dioxin, which is the um, chemical pollutant that actually makes three-headed babies in the adult. Yeah, 
they it was what it's 560 some gallons they dumped on Vietnam of the dioxin itself inside the Agent Orange. Mm -hmm. it's the same thing that's in the river down here. Mm -hmm. They're everywhere. Um, it's not. It's not telling me exactly what it's um, what it's attaching to. I don't know if it's like binding with DNA, if it's like messing with a specific protein. I mean, it, it looks a little bit like the. It stores in your fatty tissues. Well, I know. I know that. But okay, so it's stored in your tissues. Big deal. Like, what is it? What is it interfering with? I don't, I don't know if it's actually. Um, Digging itself into DNA or or it's what? Big well, I know I know what it's doing at the mo at the macro scale, but I don't I don't know what it's eating your body and creating cancer tumors and. Well, I, I'm aware of that, but I don't know what the reproductive system and changing reproductive. Well, what's the molecular mechanism? Is my, is my question. See, this this is what I'm looking at. Understanding the mechanisms of toxicity. These, these are the references I'd like to dig into. Or you might say, hey, well, because, like, for example, when um, Fukushima went off, and there, there, was a, there was a lot of radioactive iodine coming across yeah. the ocean, so people would go and buy a lot of iodine, so there was a surplus of it in their bodies to force the radioactive, to, to keep the radioactive iodine from binding. It would just, it would just pass through. You don't want that radioactive ion in your in your body. So the question is like, what are these molecules binding to in the human body that, that makes them toxic? Oh, you want to plug the receptors. Yeah, I just want to know. I just don't know. It'd be uh, interesting to find out though. Well, Google. Google it. Now nah, let's just move on. Okay, so the, the point is um, it's a small molecule and all of these atoms, uh, carbon, oxygen, hydrogen, are in you know, old, old tires, for example, and once gasified, this could come out and then be used as a fuel. Okay, so here's a neat little graphic. Yeah, this is this is worth noting. There's a um, there's a company out there. I definitely want to take a look at these these guys. Uh, I've been on the phone with them a little bit. Cool Planet. Um, one of one of their products that they were working on is um, just a synthetic octane. They're not going to show all of their uh, formulas here, but they have they have done a nice job of marketing. So we've uh, we've been on the phone with them there in, uh, in Colorado, but one of their and I don't see it listed specifically here, but one of their initial well here we go chemically identical to fossil fuels. So if we go back here and say, well, here's your di, um, dimethylethene, um, premium gasoline could be a product. Just meaning you've got full um, full octane. And how do you get from syngas to DME? Well, here's your um, uh, here's your carbon, here's your oxygen, and here's your H2. And I do not know all of the um, all of the details, but more or less what's um, you know what's going on in these in, in these processes. You either you either take a um, um, well, let's just look at let's just look at syngas H2 plus CO CO comma uh, C O two. And if this is going to, uh, let's draw the whole thing out. Uh, let's just draw it out as um, uh, C two O H 
six. That's the uh, that's the formula for it. Um, really, what you're what you're doing is applying. Um, Right. Well, it's, it's, it's got to it's got to go into some heat and some pressure. I mean, it's got to it's got to get uh, um, heat plus uh, pressure. Just basically get this to get this molecule to form. And then, if you want to go, uh, what's the leftover residual? On that? Well, again, this, this I'm just kind of like showing this. Just roughly, because if you wanted to, um, uh, it's probably what's going to probably what's going to happen here. You'll have um, you'll take three hydrogens, for example, H two uh, plus um, two COs. And then you're going to be left with um, C2OH6, and then you'll have an extra um, an extra carbon uh, coming off. off the well, that, you know, that's a <clears throat> that's a really good question. In some of these in some of these processes, um, because that's what stumped me on the, the question. Yeah. Well, let's take a look at it. Um, or, I mean, actually, now because you're, you're not going to get a solid. A solid carbon is not is not going to come off of that thing. So what you're what you're looking at is um, um, you'll just take and double this. So what you'll do is just you'll have, just have this. You just just add more of them. Uh, two plus H two plus H two. Um, then if you have uh, four, then you've got two here, and then you'll get an uh, an oxygen will come off. So now we've got um, two two times six is twelve hydrogens. There's your twelve hydrogens. You've got uh, four carbons. There's your four carbons. Four oxygens. Two of them are in this DME, and then the other one uh, went off as a gas. So that's how you balance that. The strategy is just you just kind of keep doubling things until uh, an extra extra molecule that makes sense comes out. Okay. Uh, vapor pressure lays, lays between butane and, and propane, which is kind of nice. And that's that's where, um, again, this sort of heat, heat and pressure comes in for manufacturing these gases. No smoke for DME. Low viscosity. So low ignition temperature. High vapor pressure and low ignition temperature make it a good diesel fuel. Cetane is 55 and uh, fairly high com just compared to diesel itself. The bulk velocity. It's kind of a neat property. So the um, if I take a chunk of matter, chunk of fluid, and um, you know squish it from all sides, so I put uh, pressure in. Um, the bulk modulus is is B. It's just it's more or less the um, so if it's higher, you need a, a, it's the change in pressure over the change in volume. So as you, as you squish it, 
So if I, if I push on it a lot and it doesn't deform much, then um, I've got a high bulk modulus. That's what that means. So when it says DME is more compressible with diesel, it, it means that, at, so you might, you might say, oh, I've got, um, you know, a cubic centimeter of this. I squish it, and now you have less than a cubic centimeter. Uh, well, you still have a cubic centimeter, sorry. You still have the same mass, which will give you the energy, but you've got less volume. So it can just, it can uh, mess with the injection systems. I wonder if that's what's going on with our hydrogen truck. I wonder if that's what's going on with the hydrogen truck. It's not getting, um, something's not getting the air to it, I think. Which can your, when can drowns it out, but I think it's not the air, I think it's um, a limp mode. Because once it went into limp mode, you can't, that truck's a little bit different, you can't just unhook the battery. Which, was, which mode is it? It's called limp mode. L-I-M-P? Limp mode, yeah. So oh, yeah. When you're, um, you got a sensor on your pedal that tells you, that tells your carburetor where your pedal is. Yeah. And so it adjusts the air sure. the intake that comes in and, and out. Yep. The thing about that is, once that went bad, it set that that code off. It's just going to stay in limp mode. Well, until you get the computer reset, I'm thinking. We put a new one on there. A new sensor. A new. Well, we can't. We you can't just take the battery cable off, terminal off, and have the computer reset perfectly. I mean, you can do it. I think I I think I'd be able to do it in the fuse box because if you take a certain fuse out. It'll reset your whole computer. It's, a, it's your standard reset. You said you've got a uh, buddy who can help us with that, too? Oh, yeah. When can we get him here? I, I just got a call him. He would be here Thursday. You want to try to work on it Thursday? We could. Well, let's try to do it during class on Thursday. Here's, um, but he's, here's the bullpen key. I'll get you the truck key too. He's what? He's in. He's he'll be working till four, four thirty. So it'll be. We could do it. We could do it Thursday night, I think. It'll be in the afternoon. Yeah. We're all taking bombs to okay. Um, yeah, that'd be great. And to reset the computer. Yeah, we should just reset it. Yeah. Thanks. I'll get a hold of you. Appreciate it. Okay, so DME is a solvent, it, so it will dissolve plastic and rubber. Um, it does not corrode metals, it's nice. Um, this is kind of nice to note. Um, environmental releases, so if DME is out in the atmosphere, it's not very stable. It decomposes into CO2 and, uh, and water. Doesn't actually burn; just decomposes. Oh, rapidly decomposes. Rapidly decomposes. Um, okay, not found in, ma in nature. It must be manufactured. Same thing as meth. Isn't it by taking um, uh, wood alcohol and hydrous and then add hydrous atmosphere, just burning the oxygen out of it? Is that how you make dimethyl ether? It's a good question. Uh, let's let's just check it out. Um, in this in this case, it's it's as we um, as we said as we guessed, carbon monoxide and hydrogen, um, and these are most um, economically derived from natural gas or um, or from coal. But yeah, um, natural gas and coal, you you can make it from wood as well. Yeah. Okay. Two reforming processes uh, involving methane are outlined. So steam reforming, same as what we saw in MEOH production, and carbon dioxide reforming. Um. <coughs> so here's the uh, here's the C so you start with methane. 
carbon dioxide. Here comes your carbon monoxide. There's your hydrogen, and now you've got the uh, molecules for doing your um, DME. And so, the, so the question is, why go to all this trouble? Well, now you have a liquid fuel, right? The whole point is you have, now you have a liquid fuel that you can drive around with. Otherwise, you just have these gases um, there that aren't, aren't doing much for you. head over to Kern's house and check out his uh, gasifier. In fact, what we really need to do is get our own uh, biomass uh, gasifier going. The biomass? Yeah. Well, what is the uh, return rate on biomass? It's not at all, is it? It's more than hydrogen. What do you mean the return rate? Well, the ERI. Because I was, I was just thinking if you combine that, the hydrogen, you might be able to break even or a little bit more if you combine the EORI. Oh, the EORs. oh yeah, well, I mean, <clears throat> on woody biomass, it depends what your, um, what your goal is. I mean, if you're just burning it to stay warm and you capture all the heat, you're and you just walk out in your backyard to get a chunk of firewood, it's, it's really high. I mean, you get, you get a way more heat energy than you did just, you know, cutting, cutting the tree down or walking out in your backyard. Um, the other thing that's nice about the Biomax is that it, um, you know, gives you heat, makes electricity. See, that's what I'm looking at. Yeah. I, the electricity. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm guessing it's going to be... Um, 30, so the, the, the process itself is going to be 30% efficient. The question just then becomes um, how much energy did you take to get the wood? Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's, that's really um, all it comes down to. It's kind of an idea that it set the, because the biomax is not a trailer, it's not like it's so much in it, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Set your um, hydrogen. Station up next station to Station in a, on a semi trailer, <coughs> and you just pull them in side by side because they got to pull semi trailer out to these log decks. Uh huh. I mean, you can sit right by a log deck. Oh, and co-fire the hydrogen with the uh, wood gas to make There's electricity. No fire, fully fire the hydrogen with the wood gas if you could. To make electricity. To make the electricity to pump the hydrogen down. Oh, I'm with you. You could also use the you could also use the the um, the biomass as itself if you're over pumping electricity to convert into hydrogen for your process. You just gotta separate all the other impurities out of it. I like that. But you can put them. You know, they, what you're essentially doing is the only transportation cost from that point you're having is to pump the hydrogen tanks, and you know, like. Like you have a hydrogen storage tank. Yeah. Is it liquid or is it just under pressure? Um, it's kind of gassy, isn't it? As, it it like depends. I mean, if we looked at. Um, let's take a, hydrogen is a holy grail. Yeah, let's see. Um, let's look at the hydrogen critical point. Let me see. Pretty uh, has to be fully liquid without boiling. It needs to be at 28k. Fully liquid state without boiling. Yeah. Yeah. 
I saw it. Yeah, so I, I think to answer your question, though, it's not it's not actually liquid um, at the at 500. Um, well, no, it, sorry, it's a uh, three 300 atmospheres is the pressure. Convert that to megapascals. Let's just get back in here. Okay. Um, so once the syngas is formed from whatever feedstock, the way to make the final product is to first make MeOH and then uh, dehydrate it. So see the various reaction steps on page 175. So I'm just going to write. Um, I'm going to write a few of these out. So if we start, let's just, there's, so actually there's several, several different, uh, we skipped several steps in our initial, uh, initial analysis. Yes, yeah, so we got CO plus 2H2. Here we've got CH3, so there's your methane, then your hydroxyl on the end. Um, and then it says the um, yeah the uh, the change in enthalpy is uh, negative 89 kilojoules per kilomole. So that's one necessary reaction. Um, this is the formation of methanol from from syngas over a suitable catalyst. So the water-gas reaction, this is carbon monoxide plus H2O becomes carbon dioxide plus hydrogen. Okay, so these two reactions form the basis of commercial methanol production. So this is 6.5 this is 6.6 process that's been used for many years. Okay, in the production of dimethyl um, ether, the final reaction is the catalytic dehydration of the methanol. So let's start with the methanol, uh, CH3OH. catalytic dehydration. So two of those. So you've got you know, two, one oxygen in each one of them. Dehydration just means you're going to get water out. So here comes a CH3, O, CH3 plus H2O, and there you're, there you're basically done. So there's your dehydration. I guess we can go in and just do 
do the whole thing at once. It's three C O plus three H two. Well, there's there's a couple different, um, couple other ones, but I think that's that's the main one. So we'll just leave it at that. How are we doing on time here? Actually, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna keep rolling. The hour's almost up. All right. Um, did you say you had one other one other question? It's probably from last week's. Probably five. Well, it's due tomorrow, I guess. Hour day and yeah. It's the uh, yeast. Put yeast in silo. Okay. And I'm just the first thing I was not seeing the reaction of the balance. I thought that's what we wanted to start. Oh, do you want? Do you want to? Is it the homework or the exam? <laughs> so you got a thousand pounds of xylo. Yep. Which works out to be two point seven three and twenty nine atomic units. Let's just take a look at it here. So you got C, which is 12, and H is. Let's see, that's how I'm So here's your xylos uh, C5, H10, O5. So we got 1,000 pounds of this. Okay, so plus yeast yields ethanol. Some so I'm just going to write it this way. Uh, C2 H1234567 Right? Okay, so we've got, um, so we just need to balance this guy. And let's see if we balance the, um, let's see what happens if we just balance the hydrogens first. So if we got, um, take this to 30. So we'll go three, let's just try this, three C five H. And O5 yields. So that's um, that takes that to 30. So we got five of these guys. C2H6O. So now we've got um, so, so the hydrogens are balanced. We got uh, plus CO2. <coughs> so here's um, 15. And here's 10, so far so good. For oxygens, we got 15. And here we got um, five. So we need five more of the... Uh, if we, have we have 15, to we need 10 more, so we, if we go five of these, now we got... Um, five carbons plus five carbons is 15. And then we had five oxygens plus 10 oxygens. We got 15. Does that make sense? So you balance, you want to just two balance equation. Yeah, so now I got 30. Yeah, so now I got 30 hydrogens on both sides. There's three, 
3 times 10 is 30, and I got 30 hydrogens because 5 times 6 is 30. And now for carbons, I had 15 because 3 times 5 is 15. And where do I get my 15 on the other side? Well, I got 5 times 2 is 10, plus 5 is 15. And I've also, on this side, I've got 3 times 5, 15 <coughs> oxygens. And 15, yeah, 15 oxygens as well on both sides. Okay, I understand that. I was thrown off by the yeast. Yeah, don't worry about the yeast. So you got that? Is that uh, going to... Why, why, why don't you worry about the yeast? Because that just gets filtered off in this. Um, the yeast is just the factory. The, the sh the sh it, it, it looks like this. I mean, the... Um, well, it doesn't have a chemical. No, the yeast is just sitting there, and then the um, xylose, just the xylose goes in, and then the ethanol and the CO2 come out. Right, it's just yeast. Yeah. The yeast is just, it's just the factory. It's not consumed. I mean, it might be... Dividing. I mean, there might you might have more yeast in there at the end, but um, <sighs> yeah, there, there may be some other molecules. It's, it's sort of consuming or eating inside the the batch, but it's not it's not part of the equation. Does that answer? And there you can do it. Yeah. Then it's just like every other problem we've done. Okay. Let's take one. One quick look. So to get a thousand pounds, you just got to multiply it by all of the. First, do the molar ratios, which we just did, and then get the poundages. You know, figure out figure out how many how many moles a thousand pounds of xylitol, and then then you've got the molar. The molar ratio is um, you have you have five moles of ethane for every three moles of xylitol, and then once you know how many moles, you can just calculate the uh, the pounds. Okay, let's just look at the example problem. Let's do a little. Always check to see that it's balanced. Here's the basic ratio. Perfect. Easy to see. It's not balanced. Oh, we did this. Yeah, so this 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 problem, um, it's it's really just the same same problem we've been doing all all semester, just a little more yeah. a little more involved. Like yeah, so this, this is a really really good really good explanation. All right, that's it I for was me. Just confused with the yeast. Okay.